population of 1.1 billion and growing, is the second largest democracy in the world. And thanks to over 8% of annual growth, rising foreign exchange reserves, a booming capital market and significant growth of the economy over the last decade, India is today the second fastest growing economy. And all should be well. The composition is so different now and it's, it's now becoming like as if there are two Indias. Unfortunately, it is not. Underneath the complacency and affluence that have pervaded the country lies something that is forgotten or sacrificed in the pursuit of money or rather a bigger economy, healthcare. Chronic diseases which are affecting India are so sad and so severe. For example, we are going to be the diabetes capital of the world. 20 million people are going to have diabetes. More people will die of diabetes than all the wars combined that we took part in. So that's how severe it is. Hypertension, stroke, obesity, uh, metabolic disorders, all those are chronic diseases which more and more people are being affected. Let's take arthritis. More women suffer from arthritis than ever before. In India annually, one lakh women die during childbirth. Five lakh people die of tuberculosis and gastrointestinal conditions such as diarrhea, amoebiosis, typhoid, cholera, etc. affect nearly 100 million people every year. While the estimated number of people suffering from HIV AIDS is approximately 5 million. The problems in healthcare are essentially human resources related. That today in this country there are not enough doctors. We have an average of around 0.6 per thousand population compared to the US which is at 3 per thousand and the world average which is 1.2. So in India there are not enough nurses, there are not enough doctors. The appalling state of healthcare can be attributed to the widening socio-economic divide that exists in India. While over 70% of the population live in rural areas, 80% of doctors, 75% of pharmacies and 60% of hospitals are located in urban and semi-urban centres. Most of the rural villages have not even seen a doctor in 10 years and millions have to actually walk miles to get medical attention. There's lots that needs to be done um, when one talks about um, making healthcare accessible to the poor, whether it's in urban areas or in rural areas. Um, the challenges are many. The infrastructure, uh, at least the skeleton of the infrastructure is there. There are PHCs, CHCs, government hospitals, etc. But they are not manned adequately, they are not equipped adequately, they do not function adequately. Um, the private sector does not have, as of now, sufficient incentive to look at uh, uh, the low income market, either in rural or urban areas. Another major deterrent in ensuring a better healthcare is that medical services are unaffordable to many. A single visit to a doctor can set an average family back by several days of earnings and hospitalization is beyond the reach of many. The government spends uh, about 0.8% of the national GDP to about 1% of GDP on, on healthcare. Now this needs to be augmented when not only in terms of the amount but in terms of the efficiency of delivery, in terms of monitoring for outcomes and for the actual benefit that happens. And this is not happening today. At less than 1% of the country's GDP, public health expenditure in India is amongst the lowest in the world. The total expenditure on health in India has a percentage of with 75% of it being private health expenditure. Whatever delivery mechanisms that are in place, are not adequate to take care of the healthcare problems. And as a result, the uh, people, particularly the poor, have to go uh, to private practitioners, uh, which are expensive. With no appreciable healthcare coverage, around 97% of Indian population pay out of pocket for healthcare services. Private expenditure forms more than 80% of the total outgoings on healthcare services. And the second most common cause of debt in rural India is the money borrowed to fund healthcare costs. Curative medicine is out of reach of people who earn a few, let's say 20 rupees, 30 rupees. For them to be able to pay a fees when their other expenditures contending with the same amount of income is very, very difficult.
any health emergency in the family and they go into debt and then it leads to spiraling of the effect, the ratchet effect. So we must ensure that knowledge on how to be healthy is very crucial and one must try to find ways of disseminating that knowledge. There are approximately 23,000 primary health care centers in India today. But the kind of talent needed to man these centers is far from adequate. With the income levels in the metros and towns soaring in the last decade, the demand for superior medical facilities has made health industry a lucrative business. Doctors and medical professionals are increasingly attracted to these pockets of affluence. This has resulted in a great difference in the medical facilities available in urban and rural India. To realize its full economic potential, India must now start to invest in innovative healthcare programs to build a healthy country. The Pirmal Prize 2008, the brainchild of the Pirmal Foundation Centre for Innovation, Incubation and Entrepreneurship at IIM Ahmedabad, is one such initiative that aims to acknowledge and foster innovative solutions that aim to democratise healthcare. Our dream is really at our company to democratise healthcare. Like Henry Ford took the carriage of the American highway and replaced it with a car, is there something similar we can do in healthcare? where we can democratize it and give the average man access to modern medicine and modern healthcare. No Indian company alone can solve the healthcare problem. I was telling you about the crisis. But what we can do is to create a network. And the network we have created with IIM Ahmedabad, which is an incubator of innovation, is to create an, a river in which many ideas are coming in. So the confluence of that river will add strength to that current of innovation. The initiative recognizes high-impact, scalable business models that propose innovative solutions which directly or indirectly address India's healthcare crisis. The thought process was that we needed to get our, our country's best people to tackle our country's worst problems. In a free market setup, what happens is that people often, the best people go for the most lucrative opportunities. But the idea of this prize was to attract talent from across the country and across the world to look at a problem that seriously needs consideration. I think initiatives like this which actually generate and encourage innovation um, and look for new ideas and new ways of doing things are a terrific thing. Uh, I think they need to happen more and more and they need to reward people for innovation as well as implementation of the innovation in a large scale so that it makes a real difference to lots of people. On the other side of the break, we'll take a look at some innovative solutions that competed for the Pirumal Prize 2008.